Hi friends! If you like the videos under the heading of Stealing from the Chinese, then make yourself comfortable. Today there will be next edition. Each time I try to copy more and more complex designs and today we have a welding inverter on the operating table. At the very beginning I will note important points. First, I do all this for the purpose of creating content. As a result, all source files will be freely available and anyone can repeat it. I don't pursue commercial goals, I'm not going to produce a party of copied devices. Your thumb up and positive comments are enough for me. Secondly, I chose the cheapest and one of the simplest inverter and many will have a question. Well, since I started copying, why not copy a good, expensive device? I chose this inverter carefully and I will say right away that after a complete copying it will be greatly improved and also it has an operating problems, worn markings and conning microcontrollers, cheaper and easier than similar ones. I tested it very thoroughly for several days and believe me, it showed itself from the best side. It's very good at work, the protections work out correctly and there have never been any problems with the arc. I made measurements of its characteristics. The maximum welding current is about 120 to 130 amps. Well, for $50, that's exactly how much I paid for it, you shouldn't expect more. And no need paid attention to what is written on the nameplate. The open circuit voltage is about 70 volts, that is, there will be a confident ignition of the arc. The minimum current is 10 amps, and believe me, the arc is ignited. Even at the minimum current, it is light, weight is about 1.5 kilograms. I didn't carry out measurements of duty cycle and it isn't necessary. The duty cycle of the inverter will depend on the cooling which we will take care of. I will repeat once again, I will copy this inverter purely for the circuit and then I will finalize the circuit and create my own version of boards on deep components with all the modifications. And in the end, we will get a copied but practically different battery inverter. All files, boards, circuits, winding data will be freely available and anyone can download them together with the general archive from the link in the description. The video will be released in two parts. In this part, the complete copying process will be shown. In the second part, the study of the circuit, revision and creation of a new inverter and boards for it. Well, now let's go to the point. This is our inverter, bought for 50 bucks from a local store. It has analog control, overheating protection, active cooling, and that's probably all. Let's disassemble it to study the feeling. Made exactly like any cheap Chinese inverters, half bridge topology, yes, there are savings, but I have seen worse inverters. I like the circuit itself in it, everything is quite competently implemented. Regarding of the component saving, well, that's nothing. At the end, we will put better components and take care of good cooling and also increase its power. An inverter is built on a pair of IGBT transistors. These are quite powerful BTA40 T60, 40 amps, 600 volts. The transistors are controlled through a galvanic isolation transformer, which is very good. The transformer itself is controlled by the CG3525 PWM controller, which is located on a separate control board. Current stabilization is realized with the shunt installed at the output. There is a primary current transformer on the board, on the basis of which the current protection is probably built. There is an auxiliary source. It is a single cycle flyback based on the LNK626 microcircuit. This power supply feeds the control circuit, the soft start relay and the cooling fan. The source is assembled on a separate board while the transformer is located on the main board. Power transformer wound on a torus, windings are single core with a decent section. Among the shortcomings I note that despite the copper color, the windings are aluminium, though with a rather thick copper coating. The output rectifier is built on three diode assemblies R40U02. Apparently these are 200 volt diode assemblies with a current of 40 amps. 
The radiators for cooling the power transistors and the rectifier aren't large enough, but I say again, I've seen worse. Given the size and cost of this inverter, it's quite satisfied. At the input, everything isn't as bad as it might seem. Here we have full-size power switch to 450 volt electrolytes with 473 microfarad capacitance in parallel and a full-size 30 ampere relay in soft start circuit. There is also an anti seed thermistor to limit the capacitor charging current. At the moment, the device is connected to mains. There are complaints about the bridge. Here initially it was for 25 amps. Later, I replaced it by a 50 amps KBPC5010. A short commercial break. Tired of homemade PCB technology? Or your PCBs aren't as pretty as you'd like? GLC will manufacture boards of any complexity and size for you. The complexity isn't important. The minimum cost for a batch of 10 to 10 cm boards starting from $2. Moreover, the price doesn't change depending on the selected color. Fast delivery and convenient payment methods. And the quality is at the highest level. The link to the GLC website can be found in the description under the video. There is another board with a welding current regulator. It contains the current regulator itself, operating mode indicators, a trimmer that limits the maximum current and a dual operational amplifier. I'm starting copying by carefully photographing whole stuffing from different angles. Then I demount all large components, including transformers. Put all this in a large box and try not to lose anything. Next, once again in high resolution take pictures of all boards with SMD components. Then I take a hot air gun and at first demount the SMD resistors and microcircuits. Fortunately, there are markings on the microcircuits. There are many SMD capacitors and Zener diodes on the boards. So I first print out a photo of the board, then I demount and check each SMD capacitor and Zener diode separately. After that, the data of this component is signed on the photo. After all the boards are dismantled, I clean them and scan from both sides. This is necessary in order to make it easier to copy. These scans will give us silk screen printing. Next, we need to remove the silk screen solder mask from the boards, so I put them into a caustic alkali solution and heat up to speed up the process. This stage is extremely dangerous. The process is carried out at open air with an obligatory use of personal protective equipment, gloves and a respirator. As a result, we get already cleaned boards that need to be scanned from both sides in high resolution. After that, the photos of the boards are loaded into the editor to create printed circuit boards. First, one side of the board is created and saved, then this photo is deleted and the other side of the board is loaded in its place. Everything is combined and the process is repeated several times. All depends on the number of boards. This is a rather long, relatively complex and monotonous process. It took me about four days to completely copy all the boards and check them. In my case, I will develop my own version of the boards, already on deep components, and this process is a side effect, but it is necessary because on the basis of the boards I will copy the circuit. We will return to the diagram later, but for now we need to deal with the transformers. We have four transformers, a power transformer, a current transformer, a galvanic isolation transformer, and an auxiliary source transformer. Some of them have markings with information not only about the core, but also about the windings. Thanks Chinese, they signed everything, although as they say, trust but check. We need to unwind all transformers despite the presence of data on the number of turns, since the winding in some of them is quite tricky. First, I disassemble the power transformer, although in this case, the turns can be counted without unwinding. Before unwinding a particular transformer, it is highly desirable to measure the inductance of all windings. We unwind the windings and measure characteristics such as the number of turns, the order of windings, the wire diameter, the number of cores, the magnetic permeability of the core, and their dimensions. 
Re repeat this for all transformers. I just signed the characteristics of all the transformers. They are in front of you. The dots indicate the beginning of winding. I think everything is clear. We have transformer data, the ratings of all components, and the board. Now, the most important thing remains creating a schematic diagram based on the boards. I will copy by blocks, I mean four boards, a board with a current regulator, a power board, an auxiliary source board, and a control board. For you, this is a few seconds, but in fact, it took me five days of active work to copy and check the circuits. I will start with the auxiliary source board. Here is its circuit. This is exactly what is on the small board. Everything related to the input part and the secondary circuits with the transformer are on the power board. Further is the control board, and here is its diagram. In this part, everything is clear. We have a PWM chip and a driver on field effect transistors. The production is realized very competently, not through the standard 10th PWM pin, but through an additional strapping in which the transistor, in this case, mutes the soft start capacitor. This solution provides faster reaction. Feedback is carried out through the 9th pin of PWM. Other circuits seem to be standard. We will study it in more detail in the second part. And this is the front panel circuit. It has the only dual operational amplifier on which thermal protection, indication and current regulation are built. It remains only to deal with the power board, but this is already in the second part. Also, in the second part we will finish everything and instead of separate circuits, I will create one big complete circuit. We will study how it works and what nodes it consists of. Then we will finalize and create our own version of the board without using the SMD components. I confess, I don't like to work with SMD. Deep components are more convenient, but this is my opinion. After that, we will order new boards at the factory, assembly and test them. In general, there will be a lot of work. So subscribe and press the bell not to miss the second part. Share the video with friends. Also, you can subscribe to my Instagram. On this, I say goodbye. Until next time, with you was Kasian TV.